In this presentation, two exercises will demonstrate differing treatment options for unstable subcapital and comminuted neck fractures of the fifth metacarpal. Upon completion of this exercise, you should be able to identify elements of the anatomy of the fifth metacarpal neck and correctly perform the stabilization of the fifth metacarpal neck fractures using intramedullary K wires and or a metacarpal neck plate. This procedure is indicated for unstable subcapital neck fractures of the fifth metacarpal. In the first exercise, a subcapital fracture of the fifth metacarpal will be stabilized using two 1.25 mm K wires inserted into the medullary canal. The patient is positioned supine on the operating table with the arm placed on an arm table at the level of the shoulder joint. The use of a tourniquet is strongly recommended. A fluoroscope is positioned opposite the surgeon to allow intraoperative radiological examination. The approach to the fifth carpometacarpal joint is made through an S-shaped skin incision that runs longitudinally in a dorso-ulnar direction. The required instruments are 1.25 mm K wires, the wire bending pliers, the 3.5 mm drill bit, the 3.5 2.5 double drill guide, the 3.0 mm round burr, and the orthopedic mallet. A 3 cm skin incision is made longitudinally over the base of the fifth metacarpal. The skin and soft tissue cover are mobilized in the dorsal and palmar directions, taking care to protect the dorsal sensory branches of the ulnar nerve. At the base of the metacarpal, two oblique 3.5 mm holes are made as far as the medullary canal from proximal ulna to distal radial, but not through the opposite cortex. The holes in the cortex are widened with a round burr. Two 1.5 mm K wires are bent with the wire bending pliers. The blunt end of the K wire is bent to an angle of 30 degrees, about 15 mm from the end. At the other end of the wire, a right angled bend is made in the same plane with the wire bending pliers. To prevent injury, the tip of the wire is turned in. Prepared in this way, the wire is pushed into the medullary canal by hand. If necessary, it is carefully driven in with the hammer in the distal direction. The second pre-bent K wire is inserted in the same way. The K wires are advanced distally to the level of the fracture. The head fragment is then reduced into its correct position using the JAS maneuver. By flexing the MP and PIP joints to 90 degrees and using the proximal phalanx to push up the metacarpal head. The K wires are further advanced distally into the head fragment without perforating the cortical bone. The bent end of the wire should point upwards to buttress the head fragment from inside the medullary canal. On the model, the position of the wires in the medullary canal and the result of the reduction of the fracture can be checked by opening the soft tissue cover in the distal direction. Under clinical conditions, the position of the K wires would be checked using the image intensifier. The subcapital fracture is fixed and stable under load. The reduction is correct. 
Finally, the two K wires are shortened. In this exercise, a fifth metacarpal neck fracture will be fixed with a 1.5 variable angle locking metacarpal neck plate, which is designed with an anatomic contour and hole configuration to facilitate fixation of the head and neck of the metacarpals. The patient is positioned supine on the operating table with the arm placed on an arm table at the level of the shoulder joint. The use of a tourniquet is strongly recommended. A fluoroscope is positioned opposite the surgeon to allow intraoperative radiological examination. The approach to the neck of the fifth metacarpal is dorso-ulnar. The dorsal sensory branch of the ulnar nerve has to be carefully protected. It is secured with self-retaining retractors. The periosteum will be incised in order to approach the head and neck fracture. The required instruments for reduction and fixation are the 1.0 mm K wire, the plate holder, the 1.5-1.1 double drill guide, the 1.1mm drill bit, the 1.1mm variable angle double drill guide, the depth gauge, and the self-retaining star drive screwdriver. Open reduction is performed and two 1.0 mm K wires are inserted distal to the intended plate position. The plate is situated on the ulnar side of the fifth metacarpal so that its position does not interfere with extensor tendon gliding and respects the ulnar collateral ligament. At least two screws must be used to stabilize the head fragment. The first hole is marked on the bone through the elongated hole of the selected plate. The hole is drilled through both cortices using the 1.1 mm drill bit and 1.1 double drill guide. The depth is measured. The plate is held with the plate holder and the first cortex screw is inserted through the elongated hole. The first locking screws will be inserted in either of the most distal holes of the plate head. Screw and wire interference must be avoided when placing the screw in the variable angle hole. The hole is drilled with the 1.1 mm drill bit and the 1.1 variable angle double drill guide. In a clinical situation, to avoid penetration of the far cortex of the metacarpal head, the drilling must be done under image intensification. The depth is measured. And the screw is inserted using the self retaining star drive screwdriver. In a clinical situation, image intensification is used to confirm screw placement and length. All remaining screws will be placed in the plate depending on the fracture pattern. The fracture pattern will dictate the order of screw placement.
After insertion of the second VA locking screw in the plate head, the second cortex screw will be placed in the most proximal plate hole. The K wires can now be removed. Two additional locking screws are inserted in the remaining plate holes in the same manner. You should now be able to identify elements of the anatomy of the fifth metacarpal neck and correctly perform the stabilization of the fifth metacarpal neck fractures using intramedullary K-wires and or a metacarpal neck plate.